Ah, the sweet smell of a rose. Well, okay, actually, this one is made from brass, and the perfume that was on it when I bought it has since faded. But February is still the month of love. The Valentine's Day coming in about a week and a half. Oh, don't give me that look. Yeah, it was kind of a cheap trick to do the story of Tadalki and Garasha last year. But this time, I'm going to do a legit Valentine's Day episode. And I figure, what better Valentine's topic than Valentine's Day in Japan? <laughs> Valentine's Day made its way to Japan in the late 1930s, and it was actually marketed toward foreigners living in Japan at the time. It wasn't until the 1960s that a actual tradition began to develop within the modern Japanese culture. Valentine's Day in Japan is a little bit different from here in America. Instead of men going out and buying their wives chocolate and cards and stuffed animals and taking the ladies out on fancy dates, in Japan, it is the women who give chocolate to the men in their lives and not just their spouses. First of all, it is basically just chocolate. The cards, stuffed animals, and the like aren't nearly as prominent in Japan. After the Christmas holidays ended, stores will start displaying raw chocolate and chocolate making kits. The idea being that the ladies are supposed to make their own chocolate rather than just buy store-bought candy. Secondly, the chocolate is doled out to the people in the ladies' life in one of three styles. Giri choco, honmei choco, or the less popular, tomo choco. Giri choco means obligation chocolate. It is given by women to their male peers, co-workers, fellow students, etc. Honmei choco is the true feeling chocolate, or favorite chocolate. It is given by women to their spouses, boyfriends, or perhaps to a crush to show that they like them. Finally, tomo choco is friendly chocolate. It is supposed to be given from one girl to another to express a deep friendship and appreciation between the two ladies. Now, here's where we start to get to the really fun part. Just like the over-commercialized American version of Valentine's Day, the Japanese candy makers came up with a great idea. Hey, let's convince men to do Valentine's Day as well! I've read that there was an attempt to get men to buy marshmallows for the ladies who gave them chocolates, but it didn't become very popular. However, in the 1980s, the Japanese started to celebrate White Day, where men were supposed to return the favor by giving gifts to the ladies who gave them chocolate. Giri or Honmei, and on top of that, it is considered unseemly to give a gift less than double the value of the chocolate. Generally, the men will either buy or make a chocolate dish for the women, usually out of white chocolate, hence the name of the day where men return the favor is called White Day. It is also acceptable for men to buy the ladies small gifts such as flowers, other types of candy, or just something neat, and probably jewelry. In America, as I said before, Valentine's Day is often a day for big fancy dates, but that's actually usually part of the Christmas celebration in Japan, and Valentine's Day is usually just the exchange of chocolate. Now a similar day occurs in July during the Tanabata Festival, which is based on an old Chinese festival called the Chiji Jie, Festival of the Two Sevens. Tanabata is just the Japanese pronunciation for Chiji, of course. In the Heian period, Empress Kolkin adopted part of the Chiji Festival's idea and created the Kikoden, or Festival to Plead for Skills. Although, interestingly enough, you can apparently translate that in a more literal fashion to wind up with the Festival of the Baking Craftsmen. Anyway, the idea was that you would write little wishes on a piece of paper and offer them up to the Shinto deities. The idea being to ask for help or luck in improving your skills. Generally, ladies ask for improvement in sewing or cooking, and men ask for improvement in the manliest of skills. Penmanship. Which creates an interesting paradox. If your penmanship is so bad that the deities can't read it, will they still help or not? Regardless, the story behind the celebration is of the star-crossed lovers, the weaver and the herdsman, Orihime and Hikoboshi. In the story, the weaver is the daughter of the Sky King and was tasked with creating heavenly fabric every day of her life, on the banks of the Amanogawa, the heavenly river. Amanogawa, of course, is a euphemism for the Milky Way. The Sky King realizes that his daughter is sad, and she explains that because all she does is work on the river's edge, she can never find anyone to fall in love with and marry. The Sky King introduces her to the herdsman, Hikoboshi, who kept his herd on the other side of the river. Urihime and Hikoboshi fall in love at first meeting and get married. 
Shortly thereafter, though, the Sky King realizes that Orihime is spending all of her time with Hikoboshi and has stopped producing the Heavenly Fabric. At the same time, Hikoboshi's herd is left to wander all over heaven on their own, with no herdsmen to command them. The Sky King angrily separates the lovers, sending Hikoboshi back to his own side of the river and forbidding them to see each other any longer. Orihime was despondent at the loss of her love, though, and begged her father to let her see Hikoboshi again. The Sky King eventually relented and made a caveat. If Orihime produced lots of heavenly fabric for him, then she could meet Hikoboshi once a year, on the seventh day of the seventh month. Hence, Festival of the Two Sevens. Orihime did as was expected of her, but on the seventh day of the seventh month, when she went to the river to meet with Hikoboshi, she found that her father had removed the bridge, possibly when he first forbade them from meeting. So she could not cross to Hikoboshi's side, and he could not cross to hers. Orihime dropped to her knees on the bank of the Heavenly River and cried so hard that a flock of magpies were moved by her sorrow and rose to the heavens, promising to carry her across the river. They formed a living bridge so that Orihime could walk across the river and meet with Hikoboshi. So once a year, the literally star-crossed lovers are able to meet, and the myth goes that if it rains on Tanabata Day, it is because the magpies were unable to form the bridge, and it is the lovers' tears at being forced to wait another year to meet. Well, that was only slightly less depressing than Tadaoki and Garasha's story, and at least no one died in it. Although I've got to say, I would be a might bit tempted to throw the Sky King into the river and drown him if I was Orihime. But alas, Tanabata Day is certainly a more touching story to found your own version of Valentine's Day rather than the modern interpretation of the holiday, which is basically to keep candy companies in business. <laughs>